Okay, whenever, whenever you come back in or get your mic straight, you can ask that question and I'll answer it. Are, are there any questions about the, uh, the process of doing retrosynthesis, right? This is, a, this is something that we can apply to any of these alcohols that we start with. So when it comes to, you have to add the OCH3? Yep, we're not, doing, we're not doing that here because we're not starting with, we're not trying to get back to our ester. Yeah, I'm saying like you have to identify the um, ketone in the beginning, right? Right. right. Yes. Okay. So if if I'm if I'm going back to the ester, I'm not going to start at the alcohol. I'll start at the ketone. You follow right. Me? And if you start at the alcohol, then you'll be going to make a aldehyde or or a ketone. Okay. Okay. Yeah. See how this is a, a tertiary alcohol. So if I start with a tertiary alcohol. That's going to lead me back to a ketone star material. If I start with a secondary alcohol, that's <coughs> excuse me, that's going to lead me back to a an aldehyde star material. But your question is starting here. Let me just make up a ketone. Right? So if we were to go back to the ester, we would take the ketone. And do that to get back to the intermediate. Right. And then from the intermediate, we will collapse this back down. And just kick off one of the one of the groups. In this case, I just kick off the CH3. So then you're left with this plus that, right? Okay. But 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 that will be starting at the ketone, working your way back to the ester. Mm -hmm. In these cases, we're starting with the alcohol, so we're actually working our way back to either an aldehyde or a ketone. ketone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's a there's a difference, but that's a great question. All right, let's Dr. do one. Go ahead. Sorry, I got kicked out. Um, I, I, I I'm sorry. You was just talking so much, <laughs> and I just hit that button and didn't even realize it. Wow, it's okay. I understand. Um, <laughs> let me. Stop. Those uh, um that MGBR that was added because of that lone pair that was left on that ring. Mm -hmm. Not the ring. Okay, just whatever to make sure. whatever group. That's the the uh one of the things. The other part about the retrosynthesis part is whatever group you kick off that's the group that's going to become your granular in the star material okay that's why i stuck the magnesium on there mm -hmm. and then one more quick question um for the quiz um for one of the questions um the one that we have to write out do we have to um just show both of, like both like you know say if it's a, a secondary one do we have to show both like intermediates in like both ways we can get the starting materials or no. just you just want one of them? No, just one. Okay. Unless the question asks you to show more than one way, just show one way. Okay, great. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I just, I think I just opened those quizzes last night too. Yeah, you did. So I, I started it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. Uh, do y'all want to do another part, another piece of this one? Can we do one of the questions where you have two moles of lithium again? Two moles of lithium. You talking about like to to make um to make the alkyl lithium or to make the coop the Gilman reagent? I think with the Gilman, because isn't it like you only use one lithium? I think. No, I think with the also metallics. Yeah, so with the Gilman reagent, let's say I wanted to make uh, let me put. A, little heading right here. So let's say I wanted to make <clears throat> this Gilman reagent. I'm going to use this. All right, so that's my Gilman. That's not a long pair on lithium. That's trying to dot my eye. Right? So in order to make that, 
and get these two groups here <coughs> onto onto copper, right? The way I do that is by taking two moles of this phenolithium plus copper iodide. All right, and then when I react those two together, what I'll get out will be copper with both of those rings attached to it. Right, that's what it, so the two moles means that I have two of these, right? So both rings are going there onto copper and then copper becomes negative. All right, so copper becomes negative, it's got a long pair on it. So one of the lithiums from here is gonna end up here with copper. The other one is gonna end up here with iodine. Copper and lithium are together or lithium is just around copper? Just around it, it's just, lithium okay. is positive and copper is negative. So you may, so it's actually a salt between copper and lithium. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, in, any other questions about anything else? So, example, right, when it says that one of the lithiums will be used, right? Only one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you want to. So it's not the lithium. It's actually whatever is attached to copper. Right, so let, let's let's do that. So let's take this Gilman reagent and let's add it to let me see. Let's add it to, to uh, this alcohol halide. So we're gonna do an addition, right? Well a substitution. Right, so we got the Gilman. I'm gonna have to scroll down because I don't want this to get cut off. We'll have our Gilman here. And I'm gonna add it to this alcohol halide. All right, so what happens in this case is I'm actually going to transfer this group and substitute bromine with it, All right? So this would be, this is going back to what we were doing before. This is C, M, and then this is R, X. So this is Rx. And this is Cm. Right? So what we're trying to do in this case <clears throat> is to make a new bond between C and R. So we're going to swap these groups out. Swap bromine out for the phenylalanine. So when we do that, Right, this is a, one of your products. This is the, the main product, right? And then that's gonna be plus right because only one of those groups get tra gets transferred if you're using a Gilman reagent. So it'll be plus this phenyl copper species and then plus lithium. Bromide. Can you see where everything went? Yeah. yeah. So the bromine and the lithium end up together. You you end up with 
this half of the human reagent left, right? And then you transfer one of those groups, right, to that alcohol halide. Is that, is that, does that answer your question or no? It does. Okay. And any other questions? So that, that goes back to when we were doing the, the uh, coupling reactions. I had um, a couple of questions from the handout. Go ahead. Um, so the first one was one of the reactions we were told that the reagent was NH4Cl. Yeah. Comma H2O. Does yeah. that just refer to a hydrogen being donated? Yeah, uh, it's one of these. I think we did that one. We did that one in class. I think it's this one. Okay, yeah. Is I that, just wanted to make sure. Same one? Yeah. yeah so, so ammonium chloride is just a, 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 um, a source of H. Plus. It looks like this. We got four hydrogens. And then the nitrogen is positive, and then the chlorine is just here as a salt, right? Uh -huh. So it's just going to donate H plus. That's all, and it's a solid. So the water is just to dissolve it up. Okay. And then back to the retrosynthesis um, mm -hmm. practice problems on F. It was saying that there was two ways, um, but then just looking at it, I could only see like one immediate way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here, there, there's more than one way you can make that, but one of the ways won't involve an organometallic. Okay. Yeah, so I would just do, I mean, obviously you can see here, right, you have a primary alcohol. Mm -hmm. Right, so you can see, you can uh, consider formaldehyde. Right. Uh, Plus this green right here, right? Uh -huh. So that's one way. And then the other way would be, you would start with an outer high, but you would reduce it, which we haven't talked about yet. Okay. So leave that out. You can add like, uh, you could start with this and I'll, I'll show you since you asked. And I know somebody else was probably wondering about that too. So if I started with, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna abbreviate the range. If I started with this aldehyde and added a hydride to it, I could reduce it, right? And that'll give me the same product. But we haven't talked about that yet. So I'm gonna leave that, we're gonna leave that one alone. Okay. So you can just do, I'm just gonna say one way. Cause there's a bunch of ways to make that, that alcohol. <clears throat> but they don't all involve addition of a green. For E, it says two ways. Um, only because what if you do it three ways, you'll just get the same thing over and over. Yeah, you will. You will. Again, mm -hmm. I think with um, with E, there's a bunch of ways to make that that don't involve green addition. But you can you can just think about it as adding this ring as a green or adding one of the other ones as a green. Just leave it at that. Um, and then on the last page, one of the reagents is HOAC. Is that also just a hydrogen donor? Mm, we're going to do, you're talking about um, right here? Yeah. Yeah, we can actually start working on some of these. Okay. So all of these are, are carbonyl additions. Finger is so sticky. All right, these are all carbonyl additions. All using Grignard's uh, 
And so let's walk, let's start here at the top, right? When you see that second step in a granular addition, so the, the first step, you got the granular, second step, you're gonna have some acid. <laughs> that's just the quenching step. So that's something that we've already, already done, right? It's a quench. All it does is protonate the intermediate. So without going through the, the mechanism, what's the product here? A um, alcohol. Mm -hmm. So that's okay. Now what what did I what am I adding to it? <laughs> the CH3CH2? This part, right? And and it's very important to understand that you're adding from the CH2, not from the CH3. The CH2 is what's bonded to magnesium. Is that clear to everybody? Because mm -hmm. remember, we talked about Grenier's being nucleophiles. So it looks like this, not like that. It looks like this. Right? It's that CH2 group that's attached to the green. So that's very important. If you attach it the other way around, then that's not correct. All right, everybody okay with that product? What type of alcohol is that? Uh, tertiary. It's tertiary, which means what? I started. It will what? create the start the ketone. It will be a ketone. You see that? How they correlate, if I start with a ketone, I always end up with a tertiary alcohol, mm -hmm. right? What do you expect for the next example? What am I starting with? Is that an ester? It's also a right ketone. Wait, that's a ketone, sorry. That's all right, I'm about to push that button. That's the ketone. So my product is gonna be a tertiary alcohol. Is that right? So if you really, if you look at what's happening, none of this stuff is changing. Right? Nothing is changing. I'm just adding in another uh, substituent, which will be what in this case? That chain? This chain right here. Yeah. Right? And I'm adding it, let me let me go back. I'm adding it from this carbon. So I'm adding a four carbon chain. Right? And then if you want to be <coughs> uh, super studious about it, we can put the MG, I, and then, uh, hold up. Uh, I'll just do this. I M G O A C, because the whatever the conjugate base is of your acid, that's what always what's going to end up with magnesium. We talked about that before, right? Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure that we all on the same page, or at least somewhat on the same page. I don't know though. When I was grading that stuff last night, we weren't on the same page. Not the exam necessarily, but the homework and stuff. I was kind of thrown for a loop on that. <laughs> but anyway, let me drink my tea, keep my stress level down. All right, what about the next one? What are we starting with? Start with an ester, right? Yeah. And then notice the stoichiometry now. You got two moles of this Granger. You following? Mm -hmm. What does that mean when I when I do that to an ester? To an ester, you get um. What is it not um? If I add one mole, let, let, let me just let's just draw. Uh, uh, ketone. Yeah, let, let's just draw the product. If I do one mole, and then we're gonna add the second mole. How about that? So if we do one mole of Grenier, I should get this. 
and then you get the alcohol. Is that right? Mm hmm And then if I add the second mole, that won't be a two. And then the acid, right? I should get what? The alcohol. The alcohol. None of this other stuff changes. Uh, I'm just drawing like that. That's a CH2, CH3 right here. I just didn't have room to write it out. Wait, so you separated that? Say that again? You separated the CH2, CH3? No, I wrote it in a skeletal form. Oh, okay. What do you mean by, you mean my handwriting is bad? That, was just, that is wasn't, it didn't look like it was connected. Is that right? So two moles of green yurt plus an ester is gonna give you an alcohol. And the original OCH3, that's gonna leave us a leaving group? Yep, it'll end up as okay. a uh, methanol because it, it'll end eventually it'll get protonated. All right, so that stoichiometry matters. Two moles of a granular plus an ester it will give you a a ketone, one mole of a granular plus an ester. I'm sorry, one mole of a granular plus an ester will give you a ketone. Two moles of a granular plus an ester will give you an alcohol. For the exam, when we're doing problems like this, do you want us to write out that um, plus that NGBR OAC, or are you just really looking for the? I, it doesn't. I mean, I. Personally, I won't, I'm not going to add or subtract credit if you don't show the side products. But on a different note, you should because you need, to, you need to get in the habit of keeping track of where everything is. Right? Until you get to the point where you're not struggling with that. Okay. It's a good, it's good practice. Uh -oh. Hold up, I got a question in the chat box. Come on. I can't see the box. Oh, yeah. Yeah, got it. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's do the last one. This one, well, the last two. I'll give you, um, well, yeah. Let's see what let's see what y'all made of. I'm I'm kind of tired of talking. What what would you do? What though? So tell me what happens in this reaction. What is that an example of? Um. Elimination. The, um, Say that again. You said elimination with the BRMG combined and then just leave the ring. So is it an elimination or is it a... Um, Argo metallics? Yeah, it's, a, it's, the, it's how you make Gringers, am I right? Oh, okay. Take a arrow, in this case, this is an arrow halide. Right, remember I said we can do aerial alkyl or vinyl right halides plus magnesium metal at low temperature what type of solvent is ether how do we describe it when we were talking about this um. what do we want to avoid uh when we're making a granule, what do we want to stay away from? 
Water. Product. Product. Water, um, right? Or H plus. You don't want any H plus to be anywhere around. So either mm -hmm. I heard somebody say it. It's non-polar. It, a product. It, a product. It's a product. Because it, it cannot donate H plus, right? You don't want a, any solvent that can donate H plus. So this is actually a green formation. Magnesium metal, an arrow halide at low temperature, and an aprotic solvent. What's the product? <clears throat> a ring in the metal or the magnesium bromide, I think. Hmm. On with it. Who was that? Juanita. Okay. I had to start calling you Miss Smith. Here, magnesium, and then bromide, just like that. That's exactly right. All right? Now, look at the next step. What are you doing? You have a granule right here, <laughs> and then if you notice, this is written as a sequence, right? You got step one, and then step two. And step one, what are you doing? What are you adding to the Gringer? You want to add that ketone, right? The aldehyde. You're right. You're going to add the aldehyde. And then what, what is step two used for? The HCL. Uh, would it, uh, hydrogen be attached and then the CO go with magnesium? Yes, yes. So what? What's this? This reaction sequence. What is that an example of? That's the. That's what I'm trying to get y'all to, to put together. You got a granule and an aldehyde followed by an acid quench. What are we doing? Isn't that uh, GACA? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So we're making what at the product? Alcohol. And alcohol. alcohol. What type of alcohol? Um, is it going to be tertiary? Is it going to be secondary? Secondary. How do you know? <laughs> You're right. Whoever says secondary. Who was that? I'm looking at Bree. Um, looking at number one because there's only two, you know, two carbons. Okay. Let's let's think about it from a from a, a perspective. That's even simpler than that. I'm starting okay. with an aldehyde, yes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if I use an aldehyde and, a, and I react a green with it, I'm always going to get a secondary product. Oh, right, right, right. Right? Aldehydes plus a green is give, will give me a secondary alcohol. If I use a ketone plus a green, it's going to give me a tertiary alcohol. Mm -hmm. You see how all this stuff works together? It's like Legos. Once you learn one piece, then the other pieces kind of go with it. What section and topic is this last page again? This is a granular addition to carbonyls. Okay, granular addition. Okay. So you said this is called making an alcohol from the yeah, outside? Just, this second reaction right here is no different than what we did up here. We, this is it's the exact same thing that we were doing up here adding the granules to carbonyls. It's the same thing, okay. it's just written different. Right, so we're doing carbonyl addition of granules. So it's the same exact type of reaction, mm -hmm. it's just written differently. Okay. Right, normally, oh, let me go back, sorry. Normally you'd be used to seeing it right you'll be used to seeing it written like this right you'll have your I'm just going to write out a generic green here. that plus some aldehyde and then going to the product but up here it's written it's just written differently in that uh, reagents are on the arrow over the arrow that's it. But it's the exact same thing. It's the aldehyde plus the granule 
and then I ask the quench at the end. Right? And so, so what's the product from that? The product? Yes. You would have the um, aromatic ring being um, bonded to the um, aldehyde. Okay. So is it going to be an alcohol at the end? Yes. Yeah, you would yeah. get alcohol then. So like this. Oh, where ring came from? It's the I added it, right? I had to add this in. It's a continuation? You sound surprised. <laughs> yes. What I'm doing, let me go back. Let's go back to where we started. We made the granule. Everybody okay with that in the first step right here? Yes. That we did, we made the granular that we see in the, in blue in the middle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to take that and add it to the aldehyde that's over the arrow. Right, yeah, granular plus aldehyde. Yeah. Are you following? Yeah. So we're going to continue it. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So that's the granular. We made it. And now we came back from lunch after it's been stirring. For an hour and a half, we come back to lunch, and then we take our aldehyde and in a syringe and stick the needle down into the uh, through the septum that's that got the whole system closed up, and we just start dripping in aldehyde. Right, that's how that works. So now I'm gonna do this. This is gonna be my product. Right. Is that right? Yes. Let me let me yes. draw it, draw it. Let me not use the, the circle that time. And then uh, plus it'll be plus C L M G C R. Yes, 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 yes. So C L M G B R like that. Got it? Cause, cause that did that H from the the H C L went with the Yeah, that's, that's yeah right here on on, on oxygen. Right. One random quick question. When it comes to like how you put BR MGCL, does it matter the order? No, it okay. doesn't. Now, let me go back and, and, and clarify something because that question about the proton. Remember, when you add this green, you're, I'm just I'm just going to do a quick uh, review. When you add a green, you're, right? So let's say we have R MGX plus some random aldehyde remember when this adds it's attacking right so that's going to be an intermediate i'm going to call this r1 and r2 that's going to be an intermediate here o minus r2 and then the h is here and then r1 is here right and then this is mg x you following so that's why you need to add in the do the second step because you need to quench that intermediate and convert it to, into the alcohol. The way you do it is by adding in H plus. And the best way to add in H plus is to use some type of acid. All right? What anybody remember what, what we call that intermediate? That's the hydrogen. That's the Good. It's a tetrahedral and it's common to any carbonyl addition, whether you add in granules or any other type of nucleophile, you always go through this tetrahedral intermediate where that oxygen is negative. What happens after that is depending on what type of reaction you're doing. <laughs> Sometimes you'll eliminate and put the pi bond back. Sometimes you quench it with a proton and make an alcohol. It just depends on the type of reaction you're doing. That, that tetrahedral intermediate can undergo elimination or it can do proton transfer and make an alcohol. Are we okay with that? Or do I need to write it down? 
Oh, look, you can write, you can write it down to the side so that when we go back and review this video. All right, let me find a spot. Come on, here we go. All right. So I'm just gonna write this uh, MGX. All right, remember that this goes through oh, minus H R2. All right, so this is your tetrahedral intermediate. Let me put the magnesium out here. And then you can do proton transfer. You know, I'm I'm really jealous of the dude at Khan Academy. Cause his handwriting oh. is amazing. Are you using your your hand? Yeah, I need a stylus. I got one, but it's kind of bulky, and I don't like it. I know he has a stylus and all that rich people stuff. I don't have all this. Stuff. You try using? Don't they have like little pins for the iPads or whatever? Yeah, they do. I ain't paying them. That thing costs like two hundred oh. bucks. I'm not buying it. <laughs> Everybody chipping five dollars to get that. Right. Gift <laughs> for the class. Y'all give me all that lunch money back. I can get one. Um, Remy. Dr. Russell, I actually have an extra one. I just don't use it because I got a, a newer one. But if you want it. Oh, you balling, huh? Balling. Just balling. Yeah, I got an extra one, bro. In case, you know. <laughs> you only have to, you would just have to get like a replacement tip for it because it's like worn down. All right. I might take you up on that. He All right, so there we go. So this can do elimination. I'm gonna do elimination, and let me actually write this in pink. Some my arrow's gonna be pink, so it can do elimination. Right, and let's say we kick off. Uh, I don't know. Let's kick off R. It's not normal, but it's just to make a point. So when you do elimination. That's when you reform that pi bond. All right, so this will be R2 that's still on there, and then H, All right? Or you can do just proton transfer, and then that's gonna end up adding H plus, All right? And I'm gonna write this over here because I know I don't. When I put make this into a PDF, it's gonna get cut off. So that'll be R O H R2 and then H. Like that. So that intermediate can can do one of those two things. It can eliminate or it can do a uh, proton transfer. So for the for our examples, when you add it, <laughs> the granule to a aldehyde or a ketone, the intermediate is going to undergo proton transfer. That's what the second step is for. When you add it to an ester, if you just do one equivalent, then it's going to eliminate. Right? If you add two equivalents to the ester and then quench it, it'll do proton transfer. So it, it, it just depends on like the uh what the overall reaction is all right does that make sense somewhat yes all right so let's go we got one more example up here i think we can work through oh, excuse me dr russell quick question yeah. um is our next exam date on the syllabus yeah it was it's supposed to be today but I'm moving it oh. to Friday. As you know, the syllabus, every exam in the syllabus is two weeks apart. Right. Yeah. So I think today was supposed to be the date of it, but we're going to take it Friday. And it'll be just like the last, <coughs> the last exam we took. Why did everybody get quiet? 
<laughs> if the exam is this weekend, I'm, I'm sorry. mentally prepare, right? Yeah. yeah. I had to mentally okay. prepare. It's all good. You mentally all right. prepare for an open note exam that you're going to have the whole weekend to take. <laughs> I know. I'm gonna throw this iPad at the screen. Not the screen. <laughs> hear it. It's still All right. Are you mentally prepared now? A little bit. Fifty percent loading. All right. Well, we got to uh, Friday. We'll have class on Friday. That'll help you get a little more prepared. And then you got the whole weekend to marinate. All right. Um, let's do that last question. Wait, Dr. Lester. Uh, what is it? Can you hear me? I think Ariana had a question. Yeah, Ariana, your mic's kind of low, girl. Hello? Yo, yeah, go ahead. I can I can hardly hear you, but let me lean in. Go ahead. Sorry. Is our um class on Friday gonna be like the um I'm gonna butcher this word, but you know, the recitation? Yeah, yeah. No, it won't. No. Okay. No. I'm gonna I'm gonna introduce uh substitution. And elimination but it's going to be really brief because you already covered that in part one so it's really going to just be kind of an overview okay and i'll send i'll send the videos uh for that after we get off cool thank you but yep. we, we, we will have recitation tomorrow though what do we meet at six last time yeah yeah so we'll have recitation tomorrow at six o'clock using the same exact link. So save this link in your notes or whatever, whatever you're using, like if you got an iPhone or whatever, save it in your notes because it's always going to be the same link. Cool. All right. All right. Any, any other questions? Let's see if we could do this last problem. Where is it? Oh, come on, Russell, get your mind right. Really triple. Oh, right here. It's just all covered up. <clears throat> all right. Let me erase this. That's on the bottom anyway. All right, so look at the last uh, problem. Tell me what, what's going on in the first step. A grignard. Mm -hmm. We're making a grignard, is that right? Uh-huh. <clears throat> so that, that grignard is gonna look like this. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Okay. So now look at the next step. Again, this is a sequence. So I make the granular. I'm stirring it. I get my I go finish my bagel and my coffee. If I'm a grad student, I set this up. I'm eating my bagel. I'm reading through a journal article, waiting for my hour before I can add my next set of reagents in. Now when I come back, I'm going to take a syringe full of methyl acetate, which is what this ester is, <laughs> and I'm going to start syringing it in. And I'm going to let that stir for an hour. Then I'm going to come back and add some HCl to that. What do I get? In alcohol. Wait. Now think about yeah. it now. I'm, I'm, I'm starting with an ester. And the HCl part is not immediate. It's way after I reacted the ester with the green. You following? And I only add one equivalent of green to that ester. What should I get? Uh, one one mole is that um, ketone. A ketone. I should get a ketone now. I know this part right here is is tempting to say, "Oh, I'm making an alcohol," but if you only got one, you see how it's two. One and two, two mm -hmm. is not happening immediately, right? And so if I'm take that ester and I react it with that Grignard, that elimination to give me that ketone is gonna be happening the whole time while that reaction is going. Right, let me show you, let me show you 
why this is important. All right, so let me draw the product. So this is the product. Uh, I'm gonna put it here. This is the ketone. So that's my ketone. That's what it's going to look like, right? Plus, let me let me put this here, and let me see if we can figure out what we need the HCl for. You following? Yes. Why do we need the HCl? Because every every time, let me just draw it over here in this box. Every time we add the granule to that ester. Every, this is my, that's what the intermediate looks like. Are you following? Uh -huh. And then when that intermediate does the elimination step like this and kicks off OCH3, I'm, I got all of this OCH3 minus floating around in solution, right? With MGI, like that salt. So I need to quench that. So that's the purpose of the HCL in this step is to quench all of the salt, get rid of all of that crap. So you get that plus MG, uh, let me move that, plus CL, MGI, right? Chlorine came from the acid, iodine was already on magnesium. That's all together. All floating around, yep. Okay. And the same solution, same round bottom flask. Gotcha. Are we okay with that? Yes. All right, what's the next step? So now I made this ketone. Now I'm going to react that with another Grenier. And I didn't, let me put some. So that's one and then two is going to be, let's keep, just keep using HCL. What, what's the product? I got a ketone, I'm adding a granule to it, and then I'm gonna quench it with a HCL. Cancel out that C, um, three H, C, H3. Do I cancel it out? Like, uh, substitute the new granule for that. Uh-uh. Uh -uh. sleep. This is a ketone now. A granule plus an aldehyde or a ketone will give you what? Oh, okay. Alcohol. And alcohol. Exactly. So I'm, I'm not removing any of this stuff. This is going to stay. This is going to stay. <laughs> what I'm going to end up with is a tertiary alcohol. Is that right? Because I'm starting with a ketone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you can draw that. Somebody can bring it back on uh, Friday and then we'll, we'll uh, make sure you got the right answer and all that good stuff. So you're saying it does form the alcohol in the end? Yeah. Okay. So it's the second mole of Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. This is the first mole of granule. Because see, I'm adding this to an ester. Right? Yeah. Right. I add one mole and then I get a ketone out. Yeah. Okay. And then from that ketone, if I add another mole of granule, it's gonna convert the ketone into an alcohol. Okay, the then so then for that green, it will be right next to the oxygen. You'll um, break that pi bond and yes. it'll be like, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, the MGI on the side, that is the second. Okay. Yeah. I was, I was confused. Like, where is this other green here at? Okay. Yeah, it's gotcha. right here. Gotcha. Right. It's a C, and I know it's hard to follow those sequences because you're not used to seeing that. Right, you, you used to seeing it written A plus B and then an arrow and then whatever the products are. But sometimes you'll see the reactions written differently, written like this where you have the reagents over the arrow. But it's still the same, it's still asking you for the same thing, predict the products. All right, we gotta stop. Uh-oh. about it. I don't know what this computer is so raggy.
I think I'm gonna buy myself a new one for my birthday. When's your birthday? Uh, the 26th. I'll be 45 years old. Oh. Yep. Got all the gray hair to show for it too. <laughs> all right. Um. So again, we're gonna. I'm gonna send y'all a couple of videos on substitution and elimination after this. I'm gonna upload the video to YouTube. I'll upload the notes to Blackboard, and um, yeah, we'll have class Friday talking about substitution, and then we'll have recitation Thursday tomorrow night at six. Go ahead and take if you you should have already watched all of the Granger videos by now. So go ahead and take the quizzes that are in that YouTube quiz folder and the assign that's located in the assignments folder. You should you should be you should have taken those by now, or at least right. have them done before uh, Friday. All right, thank you. All right, I'll see y'all again on Friday. All right, bye, Doctor. All right, bye. thank you.